What is up guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Day, and on this channel I talk about cybersecurity. So um, my last video covered how I broke into cybersecurity with no experience whatsoever. Um, I don't uh, without college degrees, uh, without a college degree, uh, my certifications, my internship and all of that. So I decided to do a follow up video kind of covering how to break into cybersecurity um, without a college degree. So I am still in college. I don't have a college degree yet. I hope to get my college degree by the end uh, by uh, summer of next year 2022 but obviously i don't have a college degree and it's very possible to break into the industry without a college degree um it's easy to kind of uh, focus on your negative when you uh you know don't have certain requirements for jobs so for example if you're looking at jobs you're going to see a lot of jobs requiring uh, a college degree or a bachelor's degree or a master's degree <laughs> some requiring phds um, and it's easy to be like, oh, shoot, I don't have this, you know, I don't have this college degree. So, you know, I'm at a disadvantage. And that's not the truth at all, because a lot of cybersecurity jobs do not require college degrees. A lot of them, uh, a huge amount of them don't require uh, college degrees. So it's very possible to break into cybersecurity. Uh, let me just put out this disclaimer. This video is going to be a lot more inclined towards defensive security, because that's where I focus more in. I'm a threat analyst, so I'm, I work more in the defensive security area. So things I'll be referencing to would be more inclined towards defensive security. However, all of these tips can be applied towards any form of cybersecurity position or tech position or um, information technology position. So keep that in mind. Just simply apply these principles to any other type of job you want to get in the tech industry or any industry you want to get into. All right. So before I get into to this, we, 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 we already have established that you don't have a college degree. So you, that's one, that's another way. So we need to leverage on things that you have or you can have or you can pursue, right? And these things are certifications, trainings, labs, and projects. And that's what we're going to be going over in this video. But before I start telling you, oh, do the certification, do that certification, you have to know what skills you're looking for. What skills do you need for the job you want to get, right? Like I said, I'm more inclined towards defensive security because it's, that's what I do. That's what I'm, I'm focused on. So... In terms of getting to defensive security, you know, you have to understand the basics, right? For the basics, you need uh, computing, fu computing fundamentals, basics. So understanding the basics of information technology, understanding networking, understanding operating systems, um, information security basics, right? Knowing what um, a, uh, um, knowing what a, knowing the basics, pretty much the basics, right? There's a lot of things that are covered in this. And if I, if I were to start listing things, you know, it will be too long. But knowing the basics, you know, computing fundamentals, networking, you know, knowing your ports, your protocols, your... Um, IP addressing, knowing all of those things, knowing uh, your operating systems, understanding basics of Windows, of Linux, right? Maybe you build of uh, Mac OS or Android or whatever, but you, you're going to be, you know, mostly focusing on Windows and Linux, right? Understanding basic Active Directory stuff, right? GPOs, all of that fun stuff, right? Understanding, you know, your Linux, understanding how to navigate the Linux command line, you know, understanding how to make files, how to um, remove files, how to make directories, you know, maybe make... Um, just simple stuff in Windows and Linux, right? The basics, right? Just understanding the basics. That's what you need, first of all. And then once you got the basics down, you can now start advancing to more specific skills or more advanced skills, right? So right here, like I said, we're going to be focusing on defensive security. So if you want to become a SOC analyst or you know, work in a defensive security kind of role, maybe like junior incident responder or a threat analyst like me, you need to understand how to use SIMs, EDRs, NFI solutions, um, and SOARs, right? You need to understand some basic knowledge of cloud. You need to understand email security. You might have to know how to write Python scripts or write scripts in Bash, um, some forensics and malware analysis, understand some incident response, some basic offensive security skills, and of course, you have to continue hard work and dedication. So let me kind of dive deeper into this, right? So SIMS, EDRs, and, and uh, antivirus and source solutions, you're going to be focusing on that a lot if you're working in a SOC, either as an incident responder, a threat analyst, SOC analyst, um, um, what kind of whatever kind of thing you're doing in, in in as a security analyst or working in the defensive side of cybersecurity, you're gonna be doing dealing with these things a lot. So understanding how to how to work them, how to find information with them, how to query them, how to use them, it's gonna be important. And I'm gonna be going over how you can learn these things in the next slide. But these are the skills you need. You need to know what you need to have, right? Um, some organizations are gonna require you have some knowledge of cloud, so Azure or AWS or GCP. So getting or understanding the basics of how Azure works, right? Um, how, um, you know, the basic services in Azure, right? Understanding, you know, your network security groups or understanding your, your Azure virtual machines or databases and stuff like that in Azure is going to be important. The basics, right? Um, then email security, you know, understanding 
how to identify malicious emails you know how to identify spoofing how to you know look at the email header how to find the source ip address how to look at the dmark how to look at dkim how to look at the spf record how to analyze an email header and confirm you know if it's phishing how to analyze malicious, malicious urls maybe basic analysis of, of files to confirm if they're malicious just understanding email security is going to be important maybe um like understanding how to make uh mail flow rules in exchange you know uh pretty much like um uh, blocking ips or domains or email addresses in in, in the exchange to prevent um, phishing campaigns understanding email security in general is going to be important um and moving on um you need to sometimes you might have to understand some sort of scripting right maybe you're writing scripts in python or bash um if you're dealing with linux systems you know you might have to be writing like scripts for the systems maybe for certain tasks to automate certain tasks or maybe write a sort of certain python um, um automation um, script to do something so understanding how python or, or bash or both is going to be important in terms of advancing right um uh forensics and malware analysis so you might be doing some forensics so you might have to work with you know trying to um recover trying to analyze like a memory image or trying to um you know understand what happened on the host before mal malware got on it all that fun stuff so forensic and malware analysis will be part of advanced skills you want to learn it's a response so you know, understanding the incident response life cycle, right? From the very first stage all the way to lessons learned, um, understanding how to respond to an incident, understanding how to, um, you know, correlate incidents with the MITRE attack framework and understand each stage of an incident is going to be really important in terms of advancing. Um, having basic to intermediate offensive security skills is going to be important because having that knowledge of how an attacker works is going to help you understand the defensive side better. And also, if you want to test something, you want to test a detection, you want to test, um, you know, you want to test something in a lab, having basic offensive security skills to apply and try to you know do those proof of concepts is going to be helpful for you right so uh that's the next thing and the next thing is continued hard work and dedication right so through all of this you're going to have to be really hard working and dedicated to this right it's not easy but it definitely um has its rewards at the end so these are advanced this is advancing beyond just the basics right so these are the skills you need right and then soft skills of course communication documentation presentation um, empathy and emotional intelligence i've talked about these in a in, in a video on my channel so let me see uh so let's check that out so i talked about these top three soft skills you need on this um on the, in this video so definitely check it out um it definitely covers like um these soft skills and how they're important for cybersecurity. all right let's get back into this uh, present all right well, i apologize about my really unprofessional presentation but it's all good important thing is just kind of trying to get the message across right so we've covered the skills now we want to cover the certifications the trainings the projects that can help you get the skills so for the basics come to a plus never plus security plus all right so there's a lot of controversy about these things out there like getting certifications or uh, come to a plus is not necessary come to network plus is not necessary and i kind of agree with that right you don't just you don't necessarily have to take certifications it's the knowledge you need you need to understand the concepts taught in the certifications the the basics that are found and grounded in the certification so come to a plus to come to network plus um give you the basics of like basic it stuff um and basic like networking stuff and the computer security plus the basic security stuff right because we established here we need to understand computing fundamentals networking operating systems and information security basics and all of that is covered in the a plus network plus and security plus so that gives you the basics so you're kind of you know getting into the groove of it you're learning the basics you, you know your, your ports you know your protocols you know how routing works you know what basic security is now you want to start advancing you want to start learning these advanced skills you want to start learning sims you want to start learning adrs avs source cloud basic all of that and you want to use certifications for those right so the cyc plus is really great for you know kind of getting your understanding of um how security operation and incident response works um it teaches you all of that fun stuff i have a video on how i passed all of these certifications so how i passed the a plus number plus security plus cyc plus azure fundamentals and aws cloud practitioner all of them are on my channel so definitely check them out so you want to you know the cyc plus helps you with that uh, for basic offensive security knowledge we talk about here right the ejpt is good for that maybe the pmpt right um by the cyber mentor also another good one then if you really want to get into the root, the depth of it, right, you were talking about the blue team level one to it's a it's a practical um, uh, defensive security certification teaches you everything from security operations to incident response to digital forensics, uh, threat intelligence, um, 
really gets into the the the, the nitty gritty details. So if you're looking for all of that kind of training, you know, learning about um, email security, covers email security, covers SIMs. Um, uh, it doesn't cover all this other stuff. We'll talk about these other things. We're gonna cover everything, how to learn all these things. Um, but it covers um email security, it covers um um forensics and malware analysis a little bit, um, incident response as well. Um, basic offensive security again, you can learn that to the EJPT. Then cloud, right? You want to learn basics of AWS and Azure because those are the most popular one. Of course, you can also learn GCP as well. So you might want to get the AWS Cloud Practitioner, Azure Fundamentals. Um, just learn the basics of those cloud providers because those are the more, the more popular ones that are being used out there. Um, also, getting GCP wouldn't, wouldn't hurt, or just learning about it wouldn't hurt. This is CNA, so I put this down here because like this is kind of quite um it's I guess it's kind of a gray area. Um, CNA is definitely a really valuable certification. Um, so deciding to do that is def is is definitely based on your on your time your so your time constraint your cost constraint and um how far you really you're you're willing to go to learn something so if you really don't want to go far into learning networking in depth go for the CCNA. it's it's a great certification in terms of like hr credibility and the depth of knowledge you're going to learn from it so um definitely recommend if you're trying to get that advanced knowledge of networking which is going to be totally going to be important for you and also give you that hr cloud right um and also you know some of these certifications also have great hr cloud for example security plus hr loss is security plus um cyc plus um and ejpt uh, blue team like one are just kind of still trying to find their way in the industry um but the the goal is to leverage the certifications both for hr cloud and for knowledge right but the more important thing is knowledge because certifications are great if you, if you cannot speak to the knowledge it's it, it it's no point it's wasted time wasted effort and wasted money so your goal is not just to pursue the certifications your goal is to gain the knowledge being taught by the certifications so when you study for certifications don't just cram or just like try to get over it with learn what the certification is teaching you okay so that's that about learning the basics and advancing now you want to actually get practical skills and we're moving on to projects and training and labs you want to start applying these skills you want to start you know, you want to start getting the experience for what you're going to be doing in the field, in the industry, when you get into the industry. So start with a home lab, right? Build a home lab. I have videos. I have um, a whole blog dedicated to building a home lab. I have a whole channel um, in my Discord server dedicated to home lab support. So if you need any help with your home lab, check out my videos, check out my blog. I guide you step by step on how to build a home lab um, and I s provide support if you have if you run into any issues um, hit me up in my um, discord and I'm happy to help you out with the home lab build a PC right you've never done anything with hardware you've never you know you never you don't have a PC right you you're, you're gonna need something to work on so you can build a budget PC right you don't need anything too crazy at least when you're starting off right so build a PC look for all the parts I, 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 I was at this time okay yeah not this time last year but Last year, I didn't know how to build a PC, so I, f I learned how to build a, build a PC for the first time, right? So I bought the parts, watched a couple of videos on how to build a PC, and I built one. That was a fun project to do, right? Um, next, you might not be able to afford a PC. Raspberry Pis are great, affordable hardware to work on projects, right? You can work on, like, DNS projects. You could work on maybe putting a vulnerability scanner on Raspberry Pi. You could work on maybe creating, like, a um, VPN, a uh, VPN server in Raspberry Pi, maybe, like, a NAS server or, like, a storage server or file server or cloud server in your Raspberry Pi, hosting your own cloud service in your Raspberry Pi, like, maybe um, putting a honeypot on a Raspberry Pi, just server projects you can do is raspberry pi and the goal of this project is to talk about them in your interview because you don't have college you probably don't have experience so we're doing this projects to gain the skills the projects the training and the lab so we can talk about them in the interviews because we've not learned we've not worked with them you know in school or in the industry so that's the goal of the project so make sure you document those projects and put them in your resume you can also work on open source projects so contribute to open source projects um you know like there's a couple of open source projects maybe like um, the different ways you, you can contribute to open source projects um you know on github and stuff like that so that's something you could do as well you can work with auto automation projects right learn python try to automate certain tasks or uh create your tools in python or any other programming language right use a programming language to create a tool or to create a project people have made several projects it's okay if you remake somebody else's project which it's 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 it's, it's okay if you do that as long as you make it yours and you can speak to it and you learn from it that's the important thing also working with cloud projects so cloud is getting bigger so learning about cloud maybe aws or azure building a simple home lab in aws or azure or 
doing something there's a lot of resources out there on the cloud projects you can do so all of these things are for you to put on your resume and to speak on when you get to the interview and then next training and lab so this is this is like lab providers where you can practice your skills where you can learn new things you might not be able to do in your home lab right so like ctfs doing ctfs is a great way to learn um to learn new skills compete and to also network with people who are in the industry uh track me hack the box so you can track me is great for learning about um you know different things right it's not kind of siloed into um just like um uh, offensive security or pen testing and i have a whole video on the channel where i talk about all of these things all of these labs and you know what they do and the cost the hr benefit and all of that all of these things are on my channel so definitely check out my videos i have resources for pretty much everything or almost everything i'm talking about here so um i'm not just gonna like leave you out there to just for resources i have resources and videos on the channel that help you with all of these things um and also deciding which one to choose all right so range force great for learning security operations stuff right the SOC one path SOC two path great for getting those skills let's defend applying those skills as a SOC analyst right you you go through the full triage as a security analyst so from you know from looking at the the sim assigning yourself the alert triaging the alerts looking at the logs looking at the email server or looking at the host you can you know get into the host and try to find maybe persistence techniques by an attacker so doing actual security operations stuff let's defend it allows you to do that i have a video on my uh other channel where i, I go over that um right here so this uh the incident responder module allows you to do so much and you learn a lot a lot from it all right so that's that let's get back into the presentation all right so um, we have immersive labs that's free it's it's free if you have a student email right um well that's kind of kind of counterintuitive because i'm talking about um i'm talking about getting into cybersecurity without college so um but still if you happen to have a college email it's free so definitely check it out cyber defenders you can uh, practice your skills once again i have uh, a whole video dedicated to talking about all of these training and labs so definitely check it out it should be one of the most recent videos um and then blue team labs online cyber udemy pluralsight all of these different these different training providers and labs help you learn the skills um that you need help you practice the skills you need um and once again i know this video is kind of more biased towards like um uh, defensive security but you can always apply these things to offensive security right maybe instead of um doing the cysa plus you might decide to do the pmpt right or maybe go for the oscp right it, there's there's all the ways you can apply it if you're looking to get into different side of cybersecurity. so i don't want to make this video much longer the goal is to leverage certifications trainings and projects and labs to break into cybersecurity without a college degree right you don't need a college degree to break into this field you don't have to pursue one if you don't want to but if you're able to leverage properly leverage certifications trainings and projects you can always bypass that you know college degree filter i'm going to be talking more about um how to bypass hr through networking in another video so definitely keep an eye out for that but i hope this video has been as valuable in terms of understanding how to find how um, knowing the skills you need for the job and then going after certifications and trainings that are going to help you learn those skills thank you very much for watching this video if you like this video please be sure to smash the like button it helps with pushing out the videos to people who are gonna you know oh this video is gonna really help so please help me to like the video leave a comment if you have any questions there's links to the Discord and to my website as well as my other YouTube channel. So definitely join the Discord, you know, for uh, for interaction with other cybersecurity students and other cybersecurity professionals, and to you know ask questions about anything else you might want to learn more about. Um, and yeah, once again, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I hope you found this video informative, and um, I'll see you in the next video in this series. Bye bye.